let's talk about uh, kundalini attachments. But first, uh, as as I'll do with each show, I want to give a, a brief summary of what uh, kundalini is for uh, people who are new to it that may be joining us uh, uh, today. Uh, kundalini is a dormant energy, a very powerful dormant transformative energy that lies in the last three verte vertebrae of the tailbone, extending uh, with activation points extending down the legs and to the bottoms of the feet. Uh, it is the source of the force of life within us. It is it is the force of conception. It is the force that allows us to go through the changes that we go through as a human being, everything from birth to puberty to 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 the, the maturation process. Kundalini is uh, a force of life within us, and science does not yet understand how far the Kundalini reaches into uh, our our bodies and our minds and our spirits and our understandings of consciousness. Uh, but for those of us who have Kundalini, we, we do realize that it extends very deep into us and, and uh, radiates out from us. So just that brief explanation. Uh, attachments are what we adhere to with regards to uh, wants and desires or fears or some of the other concepts of of uh, holding on to uh, that we that we have in our in our ego based conscious lives. Uh, uh, the, the fear of loss and the want of gain would be a a you know each would be their own chapter on it on attachments, but they're both attachments. With the Kundalini, there is a a strong degree of surrender that is required for the person to to understand and to receive the many, many different gifts and transformation of the Kundalini. And so you really need to to surrender your idea of self. This this doesn't mean that you 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 uh, let go so completely that you can't drive a car or you can't get the kids ready for school or you can't maintain your job. You most certainly can do these things, but what it does require is that you you get rid of the conscious attachments of being in control uh, of the Kundalini as it comes through your body as it begins to change your body. So, for instance, uh, spontaneous movements uh, such as kriyas that come with the Kundalini. Sometimes your your body will just go into a spontaneous movement that will sometimes resemble a yoga position well you just surrender to that and you allow that to take its course you don't try to control it you don't try to uh, manifest it you let it come now some of the, uh, the there have been actual yoga uh, schools of yoga that have that have come up around the Kundalini Kriya and, and in this case they they try to awaken the Kundalini by adopting uh, the positions that come in, in the Kriya of the Kundalini on the body. So the spontaneous position these yoga schools will try to use as a way to awaken the Kundalini in the, in the person that doesn't have it awakened yet. Kundalini yoga is one of these, and bhakti yoga would be another the, uh, of these. But the bhakti yoga is more of an attitude love-based uh, yoga practice, which, which I really support. Uh, kundalini yoga, I think, is, very, is also very good for the person, uh, minus some of, the, uh, um, some of the qualities that they express. Uh, a lot of the schools, because they, they are schools, they, they tell you that you have to do this and you have to do that, and these had-tos, will often form an attachment. Well, what if you go ahead and awaken the kundalini and you're in the school that says you have to do this and you have to do that, and the kundalini is saying, well, I don't want you to do that at all. You see, then you have this, this friction. Then you have this, oh, my gosh, well, the school says I do this, and and and, and the, the master says I, I must do that, and yet the kundalini in me is saying don't do either one. Well, I'm going to suggest you go with the kundalini. You surrender 
to the kundalini within you. You don't surrender to the to the school or to the to the teacher. The the kundalini teacher, if 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 they're cogent of what it is they're teaching and they have it, they understand it through experience. They'll know that that the kundalini is telling you to do a certain thing. And if they've taught a lot of students, they'll realize that oh oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. You know, and they'll tell the student, well, you must surrender to the kundalini. Go with what the kundalini tells you to do. And so in this way, the, the student is surrendering the attachment to what the school is saying and to what the, the teacher might be saying to the student body at large. What we must remember is that kundalini is individual for each person. We are each individual and unique in our awakening uh, aspects, and yet we can share many of of, of the of the uh, phenomena of the Kundalini uh, will come to us in very similar ways. And so, a teaching format can be devised. It's just that we have to remember that we come into this experience with different karma, and different karma will cause us to have uh, a different sequence of events. Uh, that are totally unique from from everybody else on the planet. And so in this regard, we are absolutely unique within a process that has similarity across the board. Okay. So we give up the attachment to the teaching or to the school based upon what the kundalini is wanting the person to do. We give up the attachments of... Uh, Perhaps in, in the Kundalini case in our society of the West right now, we may not want to go, you know, shouting from the rooftops that, oh, I am now Kundalini awakened. That may not be the best approach. Uh, you know, you might see that ambulance from that rooftop heading your to your house. So <laughs> be, be advised. Um, and, and I have actually, I've actually been in conversations with people that have kundalini where their parents or their friends have, have called the ambulance and I can actually hear the sirens on the way to the house to pick the person up and the the person is just up in arms that, that, that the family or the friends did this to them and it's a real thing. And so I wouldn't suggest that you go out and advertise that you have kundalini. And in many cases the kundalini will kind of give you the indication not to do that anyway. So, once again, surrender to the advice of the kundalini. Uh, we, we give up the, the attachment of, of becoming perhaps extremely wealthy, uh, being taken over by greed or being taken over by the, the desire to have more, just for the sake of having more. And this includes uh, money, this includes power, this includes... Uh, anything that would be of a conquest nature uh, in our society. We're very, very competitive, and the idea of conquest is very strong uh, in, in the mainstream society. And with Kundalini, you, just, you may just want to back off of that attachment of, of, of competition, of a feeling that you have to be number one at everything. Well, you don't. Let somebody else be number one once in a while. It's good to know the full spectrum of human life, not just one end of it. Okay, yes, yes, you know, we, you get all the accolades, and, and, and in our society, you know, it's, happy, it's a happiness uh, experience to be uh, the winner, so to speak. But I'll suggest that you, you dissolve that attachment to always having to be the winner. And I know this 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 goes very deep in our in our society because you know we we've, we've been kind of trained from our childhood to be right to be number one to to be the the winner and I want you to just relax about that attachment you don't need to be the winner neither do you need to be the loser okay being the the you know not having that beautiful whatever physique or that powerful physique or whatever, not being chosen first for any of the sports in the school that you may have gone to, always being kind of the, the loner and, and uh, outcast, so to speak. Many, many, many kundalini people have the experience of not fitting in. 
And so you, because you don't fit into society and yet part of you really wants to fit into society because you don't like being alone, you don't like being an outcast, you'll attach to the idea of what it is to fit in. And once again, I want you to just relax on that attachment. I won't say cast out that attachment completely because you do have to fit into society. You know, you don't want to wear a polka dot clowns outfit to the banker's meeting. <laughs> okay. So to some degree, you know, I'll just say relax on the on the idea that you have to fit in. If you're basing your life experience on fitting into society while you have Kundalini, I want you to relax on that. And and as I tell many of my students, I will say, look, have a conversation with your Kundalini. Ask the Kundalini not to come to you at work. It will still transform you. It will still do all its work with you, but you'll still be able to have your job. You'll still be able to, to teach a class. You'll still be able to drive a car. You'll still be able to do your job so that you can provide sustenance for yourself and your family. Don't lose that attachment. That's a very important attachment to have, and we need that. What we don't need is to try to fit into the social ideas and ideologies that sometimes uh, are unnecessary, such as uh, having the, the fastest car uh, in your neighborhood or, or, you know, having the latest style all the time or, you know, having, you know, over 100 pairs of shoes in your closet. <laughs> Not that anyone listening has done that, but that type of an attachment uh, I will I will suggest that you let go of. And that, that goes across the board, not just with shoes, but with cars, with uh, watches, with uh, jewelry, with um, ideas of dominance, if you always must be the dominant person, or if you always must be in the limelight, and you must be the life of the party. Well, try to relax on that without looking depressed, like going, okay, I'm not going to be the life of the party this time. I'm just going to shut up. And everybody looks at you and goes, well, what happened to Chris? Please believe. He's kind of withdrawn. He must be feeling ill. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not saying make it so drastic like that. Just, you know, just release yourself from the attachment and then see what happens. See how you just naturally flow. You flow with, uh, uh, you know, the the attitudes of the party. You don't necessarily become the one soul point or attitude at the, at the party. So you, you release that attachment. You release the attachment of, of a certain must, you know, absolute statements that you'll run into in society. Schools are very great for, for, for absolute statements. Uh, religion is wonderful for having absolutist statements. If you do this, then that will happen. If you don't do this, then that will happen. And I want you to just release it. You have kundalini. You have the goal of all religion. The goal of all religion is kundalini, is the oneness with, with the divine. Okay, you have that already. So you already know that what this book says uh, may not apply to you or, or to everyone. And what that uh, sacred text says, uh, you know, may not be the law of the land for everyone, even though it is given that way. It is, it is, it is uh, expressed that way. This is the law of the land. Everybody who is a human being, therefore you must do this, this, and that. And, you know, as you have Kundalini, you'll realize that, that religions and schools, and many, many schools of information, are are necessary for for certain levels of karmic balancing and discipline uh, uh, inculcation within a person. So for, for people that haven't had a lot of discipline in other lifetimes, well, they get to go to into this lifetime. They get to go into a very, very disciplined religious uh, organization, ideology, 
and they practice this discipline. It's, the problem is, is that if this, if this religion or ideology becomes so big and so uh, self-centered uh, that it, it, in its pride, the religious pride, uh, it, it makes itself seem as if everyone must have this. And frankly, I'll be honest with you, most of the mainstream religions are this way. They give you this attachment that says, well, you must be this way. It says, ours is the only right religion, of course, you know, and they're speaking from a plurality of right religions. And, and so Kundalini recognizes this, and, and it will suggest that you release this attachment of absolutist ideologies uh, from your Kundalini awakening experience. Kundalini comes to people from all religions. Even even the right religions, Kundalini comes comes from there as well. And it and even though these these religious uh, understandings may not know that they are heading into the Kundalini, they call it by a different name. Uh, but that's exactly where they're going: oneness with the divine and the 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 divine flesh or the flesh that is divine, which is what Kundalini does to our bodies. So look at any area of absolutism, whether it's from a teaching or whether it's from a, a religion or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, even other people that have kundalini, you know, they'll be so uh, attached to what they have done to get kundalini. And so if they've gone to a certain school or a certain guru, uh, then, oh, no, 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 you have to go to... To guru, uh, Sri 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 Sri, so somebody, somebody a yama, and uh, this is the only way you can get kundalini. If you don't get kundalini from this person, then it's just not real kundalini. You know, I would like you to to detach from that absolutism. Absolutism, you know, it, it's it's a faux pas that that we often fall into when we're describing things that that have proven their merit for us. Okay. But it may not be for everyone. What we in a technological society in the West would would uh, accept as an absolutist uh, you know, fact may not be the same for a shaman in the Amazon basin. The two different societies may have two different uh, understandings of what fact is. And so with that understanding, and because you have the kundalini or you're, you're coming into the kundalini, absolutism needs to be flexible, which I know that, you know, it's, it's kind of the opposite of flexibility. But I would, I would suggest that you begin to detach, you know, uh, from the absolutist statements and understandings that you have. And once again, surrender into the kundalini and feel the knowingness that comes to you from the kundalini, and it will pertain to how you are in your society. This knowingness will pertain to how you relate to society and how you will best prosper in this society being kundalini awakened at the same time. Attachments uh, to certain ideologies or certain understandings can provide blockages. And because you see a certain thing as an absolute truth, you know, it must be this way. And the kundalini in you may say, well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> you know, you you may have a lot of emotion wrapped up around that attachment of, well, it must be this way. And, and the kundalini will either look at that and go, okay, they are so into that attachment. We'll just go ahead and activate them with that attachment or we're just, you know, this attachment is very uh, unhealthy for them. We're going to go ahead and uh, and uh, go through this attachment right now. We're going to get rid of this or help them get rid of this attachment. Uh, so, there, you know, the kundalini itself is very, very flexible depending on your karma about how and when certain blockages are going to be removed. But I would like you to, to know right now before you have kundalini perhaps, and even as you do have it right now, to let go of your attachments of, of what must be. 
Kundalini in you knows what must be. Your consciousness or your ego does not necessarily know. So surrender that ego control over the choices and decisions that you make about your life as much as you can uh, within, within the parameters of your unique position within the Kundalini Awakening experience. Really uh, give up the ego control to the Kundalini and don't worry. It doesn't mean you're going to run naked down the streets. You know, you run, you might run naked in a forest, you know, where nobody can see you, which is, you know, very, you know, that's a fairly common thing with Kundalini Awakening. But you won't, you won't do anything really that will hurt you. It may surprise, like, so for instance, if you, if you decide to get rid of a, uh, of a, of an attachment that has a, a cascade effect on many of your attachments, so, uh, like the domino effect, you know, if you knock over one attachment and yet this attachment is connected to all these other attachments, well then, it, yeah, it'll make a big wave in your life. And, and those people who are also attached uh, to, to, the, uh, to the situation that you're, you're releasing, well, they'll notice it. They'll question you about it. They'll query you about it. It's like, well, Chris, how can, how can you're not buying that hundred sports car. I mean, you know, we all got hundreds of sports cars. Well, I can, oh, you're moving into limousines. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, there was one guru up in, in uh, Oregon who collected Rolls Royces, I believe, so, to the tune of like over 300 or so. Uh, and, I, and I'll suggest that you give up those kinds of, of uh, social-oriented attachments. Okay. And, and yet you can expect some blowback uh, from the people who are interested in those areas uh, if they all of a sudden see you detach from, from this, uh, this interest, in, uh, this attachment. So there's a little bit about the whole attachment process and, and what you might want to do with, with removing some of the blockages in your system. Now, to, to go further with this, uh, Many of us are attached to fear, uh, fear of loss. I want you to detach from your fear. Your fear will form a blockage for you within your early Kundalini uh, awakening experience. Uh, fear of the unknown is one of the strongest fears that we as human beings have. And I want you to really look at your fear of the unknown and begin to trust that the kundalini in you knows you, knows you very well, knows you better than you know yourself, and will not allow anything to come to you that will be of a extremely hurtful nature. It may challenge you for sure. We, we often need to be challenged in order to grow. And so we... We will be challenged by new experiences. But because you will have the confidence in your kundalini that is very, very strong, you need not fall into fear. You can kind of go, oh, wow, this is new, you know, and, and look to see how you can handle that. Now, often if you have an entity or if you have, uh, you know, a, a ghost or, you know, things of that nature that will come to you and, and that are interactive with you, then, yeah, you know, the, one of the first things you'll do is, is go into fear, and I'm going to suggest that, okay, that's fine. Get that out of your system. And as you get that out of your system, you will slowly begin to work away at that attachment. Many, many attachments are not just, well, okay, I give up that attachment, and then it's done. You have to consistently go into to what it is that you're attached to to release yourself effectively, from that attachment, it's just it's not a one-time uh, point of decision. Many times, sometimes it is, many times it isn't. Many times it's something that you just have to work away from slowly but surely, using discipline to allow yourself to detach that attachment, to take that off. And as you do this, you'll notice that with certainly with the entity phenomena, 
if you choose not to be afraid, well, in many entities, you know, they use your fear as food. And as you as you no longer are emitting that food, well, you've just taken a lot of the menu items off the menu, and they're going to go somewhere else for easier food. And they leave you, and you move on through it. Uh, many of the entity experiences, uh, you know, only need to last three or four months. But, you know, that's also depending on your karma. So, you know, your karma may make it last much, much longer, okay, depending on what that is. Uh, but but often the, the kundalini phenomena, such as the kriyas or the entities or or the uh, the bliss or the knowingness, things like that, you know, sometimes you just flow right through them because, you know, there are further things for you to experience. So once again, you don't want to measure timeline uh, with with uh, with other people because, you know, karma karma will set the timeline for the individual experience. The individual experience, once again, can be shared. You can see the, the succubi or the incubi or any of the other uh, entities that come, come along, ET, whatnot. Uh, but the time duration that you that you deal with it will be different from you know with each person. Sometimes it'll be a small difference, you know, but it'll be different. Uh, so so look at the attachments that you have to fear. Um, Kundalini may ask you to lose an attachment that 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 may ask you to change your job. Oh my God, this is my this is this is how I make money. This is how I survive. If it is a strong enough uh, impulse from the kundalini, I'm going to ask you to surrender to that impulse. Yes, you may not have the amount of, of funds that were flowing as before, but your kundalini, once again, has a greater understanding of, of your pattern of probabilities. And, and, you know, within that knowledge of the kundalini's greater understanding, I will suggest that you surrender to it. That's, so it's not always an easy thing to do to just resolve an attachment. It's, it, it can be very, very difficult if you're used to having millions and millions of dollars to spend every month. You know, it, it, it may be hard for you to have to spend, say, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars every month, okay, or or no dollars every month, such as, you know, uh, some people have to, to work with. So release your fear from this paradigm of kundalini. Release it. Be okay with the kundalini moving your body against your will or without your permission. Uh, don't always go to the worst case scenario. Don't always, you know, fly off into a panic if your heart rate goes, you know, extremely high or extremely low or, you know, if you start having waking visions that, that are that are beautiful or disturbing. Don't go into the worst case scenario. You realize, okay, okay, I've got Kundalini. Kundalini's showing me, teaching me something with this. And one of these teachings may be uh, getting used to something that is absolutely strange and different from my experience. Choose to be okay with it. Okay. So watch out for that fear attachment. The fear attachment is what can cause people to have Kundalini syndrome. Where fear is is forcefully injected into the Kundalini awakening experience, and then everything that happens from a Kundalini level is fearful. And you know, with the amplification effect of Kundalini, it can be extremely fearful to the point where a person will self-commit into the psych ward and basically be locked into a a chemical cage for a time. You don't need to do this. In many ways, uh, information uh, cancels out fear. So the more information you can get about your Kundalini awakening process, that is not itself fearful, the more power you have to stay balanced within your Kundalini awakening experience and to, to really receive the joy and the goodness and the bliss and the happiness and the harmony that that can, can be experienced with the Kundalini. Just take out that fear impulse. Very, very important to look at fear and the removal of fear uh, through the removal of the fear attachment. Oh, let's just put it in uh, 
um, computer terminology. Take the fear app off of your iPad. <laughs> Remove the fear app off of off of your off of your uh, your phone or your or your yeah your 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 phone or your iPad or your your uh, other kind of electronic uh, assist assistance. I like that. <laughs> It was a free app to begin with, and it was <laughs> it didn't help you. So, so, so take that app off of your operating system, okay, everyone. So yeah, yeah, uh, um, that is about what I want to say uh, with regards to attachments. And there may be more to say about this later on, but this is a this is a good uh, a good first introduction for it. Uh, Let's let's go ahead and segue to the 2012 phenomenon. The Mayans uh, had this wonderful long count system that uh, that they they had they they had a uh, an ability to to uh, structure their mathematics on base 20 mathematics, and our te- our technology is base 10. Uh, so they're very very uh, smart people. And they love to count things and to keep track of astronomical uh, uh, dates, and they they would apply certain meanings to certain dates. And in this, in in, in our in our case, you know, 2012, December 21st, 2012, seemingly corresponds with uh, uh, some of the the end of the the Mayan calendar long count. Uh, doesn't mean uh, well, many, many say, oh, it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. And and I'm going to suggest to you that every night that you go to sleep and you go into the dreamland, it's the end of the world for that one day. The world has ended for you. You have gone to sleep. And the world, when you wake up, will be completely different. Every day is a new day. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, every day is a new day. Uh, if you look at time, time and, and you look at time compression, change is change is the dominant factor within uh, linear understandings of time. Change is constant. Constant change is always there. Uh, with the end of this long count, uh, I feel that uh, there's some very beautiful things that are that are coming towards us. Now, yes, there will be some, you know, some. Uh, uh, there will be some some structural changes within the Earth for sure, and that's always happening as well. I mean, you know, Japan had that earthquake, uh, 7.3 off the coast of Japan, just you know, a little while ago. Uh, so that is always occurring. Volcanoes are always being grown and, and dispensing of the pressure of the planet. Uh, this is always happening. It doesn't necessarily mean that because humans apply a certain meaning to a certain uh, time uh, in, in their linear existence that, that it has to go along those lines. Humans don't always get their way uh, you know, in in the larger universal astronomical sense, uh, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do, and so I will suggest that 2012 is going to be a time of great change, and it has been. Uh, but this this coming update of uh, uh, December 21st, 2012, what a wonderful time to to initiate some changes in your life. Make them big changes. If you, if, you know, do the long count thing. Make the long count, uh, the Mayan long count. Make that really count in your life. Make some big changes and stick with them. And if we do get some sudden earthquakes or planetary disruptions, I'm all for it. I am all for it. You know, change is not, you know, change is change. It, the, the quality the attitude that we put on it is whether or not we're going to be hurt or pleased by that change. 
And I'm going to suggest that you just allow your Kundalini to chart your changes, even within the Mayan calendar long count. This is a wonderful time to be alive. Yes, with all the difficulties, the death, the destructions, the, 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 the hurts that people inflict upon other people, this is still a beautiful world to live on and a beautiful time to be alive. And I want you to, to look at all the hype that we have about 2012 and, you know, renting the movie 2012, which I really enjoyed. I, I loved, the, you know, the, the special effects were very uh, entertaining, I felt. Um, don't worry about 2012. Do not let fear set in. I always counsel people to have extra water and extra food. And I will reiterate that. I would like you right now, before your end of the world party, to go out and get extra water, like, you know, enough for a couple of weeks. You have to understand, you know, I live here in earthquake country. I love earthquakes, but, you know, I understand that they can be extremely damaging and, and hurtful, but less so if you have a bug out bag. And a, for those of you that don't know what a bug out bag is, it's a backpack that can hold some water, some food, some tools, some clothing, uh, you know, and, and, and various matches, batteries, flashlights, you know, various things that you would need to survive for a week or three. Okay? And, and you know, if, if have that in your house as well. Have some canned goods that, that have water in them, like, say, uh, uh, Canned peaches, or, or, or you know, things of that nature that have like a, a water with them, so that you get water with your meal already. Water is the biggest thing that you're going to need inside of any kind of a big disastrous change. You're going to need water. You'll need water before you'll need food. So water is the top priority. Food is the second priority. Uh, if you live in a cold climate, then you need to be able to stay warm. So, so you know, it comes down to the to the basics of, of survival in many of these. You know, in, if you live in a cold climate and you have an earthquake that knocks out knocks out the electricity, well, what do you have then? Not much. Okay, your heater's gone. Your 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 communication is probably gone. Uh, your food storage, your refrigerator's gone. Okay, so I would like all of you listening to this to stock up go to that go to the and 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 unfortunately canned goods you know they may not be the best of quality but they last a long time they last a long 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 time and and many of these canned food items you know they they're a meal in a can a meal in a can and they're very you know compared to other you know fresh food sources they are more affordable as well so you know this, this is my advice to you. Stock up on the water. Stock up on the different canned goods from canned corn, canned spinach, chili, vegetarian or otherwise, um, tuna packed in water, uh, these th things of this nature. You might want to steer away from those uh, food products that require you to mix water with it. Because there you go. You've just used some of that precious, precious, precious water. I would like you all to have a, a Swiss Army knife and a can opener. Not an electric one, not a battery one, but a hand-operated can opener. Know how to use it. Go out there today and give yourself an early Christmas present and buy yourself a can opener. <laughs> if you can afford to, get a water purification unit. Um, these are these little pumps, and they pump in water that is dirty, so to speak, and they go through a filter inside the mechanism, and out comes clean, potable water. Make sure you boil it first if you if you have the availability to do that. If not, then 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 hydrate yourself with that water. It's very 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 important. Sometimes change comes in the form of a, of a of a on a grand scale, look at what happened to to the 
to the Japanese with their earthquake and their power went down and boom, there you are, you have no power. And and with the earthquake, uh, many of the earthquakes here in California, the devastating one, boom, you're without power. And you have to learn how to survive without power for an extended period of time. And I want you all, because you're all precious Kundalini people, I want you all to be able to survive whatever comes. And if there's something coming on on Friday, uh, December 21st, 2012, then I want you to be prepared to survive it. Okay? Uh, have the party, but have that bug out bag too. The nice thing about, about having stored supplies is you can eat your investment. You can drink your investment. If nothing happens, wonderful. Just remember, here's the lessons of Y2K. Okay, Y2K, uh, year, year 2000, the computers were all going to go down and it was going to throw off the electrical grid and we wouldn't have power, we wouldn't have electricity and we'd be, go, we'd be thrust into the dark ages. And so everybody uh, started to prepare for that kind of a disaster. And the, you got these wonderful, wonderful books of preparedness, which I suggest you get. You know, One of them is, I think it was called the Y2K ARC, A-R-A-R-K, uh, wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff, and it teaches you how to be self-sufficient. Self-sufficiency is a good thing. Self-sufficiency, and there's also a, 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 a television series on called, well, all the electricity goes out in, on the planet, and and so, you know, people have to, to go back to the old pioneering ways where, Human or animal power was was that which which turned the wheels or that which which allowed us to survive, and so I want you to really 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 connect with your self sufficiency. Connect with that, and once again, detach from the fear. Detach from the fear of 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 you know not having society the way you're used to having it. Go ahead and have your 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 you know December twenty first party. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a good time that night. I'm, I'm planning on having a great, great, wonderful uh, uh, honoring of the Mayan, end of the Mayan long count calendar and the beginning of another one. You know, just because one long count ends doesn't mean a, another long count doesn't begin. I say let's begin it with love and, and beauty and joy and happiness, you know, and, and, and honor the, the change that this would represent, certainly for the Mayan people. You got to remember, you know, it's the Mayan people that had this long count. You didn't, you didn't have uh, uh, every other society on Earth did not, you know, go along with this long count. Now, some of the Hopi traditions line up with this, and some of the many ancient traditions do line up with this long count. And so, you know, I honor that as well. I, I see the repetition. In society, and I, you know, in in the many different societies, and I, and I, uh, I welcome that. I welcome that, and I say, okay, okay, more than one civilization is lined up with this long count. Not all civilizations, but more than one. And so, let's look look at the efficacy of these two civilizations uh, saying similar things about a similar date and time. And okay. You know, that, that, that allows us to look into this with a little more seriousness. I know NASA is debunking it, the government's debunking it, and everybody's debunking it, but not everybody. But what I see happening with the 2012 is the beginning of a, of a glorious new paradigm. Even though it may start slow, um, I, I see it as the beginning of a, of a new age of, and, and Forgive me for using that term. A new, a new period of, of self-awareness where people that have kundalini, you know, to, to bring it back to us, people have kundalini have a greater um, blending into society. And society has a greater understanding of something that we know of as kundalini, allowing a greater understanding of of, of the spiritual process and, and the spiritual evolution that we have uh, available to us through the Kundalini on this planet, allowing for that to be accepted rather than 
locked away in a padded cell with, you know, drugs being given every day. I look forward to that new long count, the long kundalini count. So you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> After Friday, it's the long kundalini count. And 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 I, for one, and I hope that, that you as well will join with me into bringing the beautiful kundalini count into its existence on the 21st of December, and I'm having that Shakti pot as well. So that Shakti pot will last seven days, and, and we will go through our normal Shakti pot uh, uh, practices, and yet, oh, how so much special this one is because of the the overture of change and, and the portent of change that is being uh, spread throughout all of our societies right now and you know you hear it on the radio oh 2012 december 21st great change is going to occur well let's embrace that change yes even if it means the electrical grid or whatever grid goes down because you you will have your stored food take a clue from nature before winter, what do the squirrels do? They store their food. What do the ants do? They store their food. What do many insects and animals do? They store their food so that they will have it when they need it. Well, hello, humanity. Get some food stored away. And don't forget that can opener if you can get cans. Can you imagine having all these cans and, oh, honey, I forgot the can opener. <laughs> that could be a difficult time. So get a can opener. Get a Swiss Army knife with all those little attachments to it. For, you know, the, the saw blade, the bottle opener, can opener, things like that. If you, if, you know, if you absolutely must not get a can opener, well, then get a get a Swiss Army knife. Get some waterproof matches, too, to put in there. Get a, a, a survival knife. They have them in the stores. They're very cool. Um, so, yeah, so so it's... So that's my brief outline for the uh, the year 2012. I see it as a very positive event, very beautiful event. If you want to to hear a similar and yet different take on my my opinion about uh, 2012, please go to the YouTube channel, which is Chrisim Kundalini on on YouTube, and you could, I have about 221 uh, videos. So so scroll down. Uh, to the one that's on 2012, and and uh, and I'll give you another uh, another some more information about that. Right now, I'd like to open up the phone lines, uh, you know, for our conversation. If you'd like to call in, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Once again, that's three four seven. Nine three four zero zero two six. I would like to also extend a welcome, warm welcome to those who visit us in the archive at a later date. Welcome everybody. Uh, uh, maybe you are visiting us after 2012, the, the December 21st. So welcome to you who are hearing us in the new paradigm. Uh, Amelia. Yes, because we have a caller. Please. Hello, you're through. Hello. Hello, Chris. This is Shandi. Hi, Shandi. Shandi Davy. Everyone, this is Shandi Davy. I mentioned her in the first show. She yes. has a book out called um, Om to Orgasm, and it's a it's a it's a uh, a book about tantra, and Shandi teaches tantra, and I would I would like to welcome her to the show, and I would like to welcome you to go out and purchasing her book, From Om to Orgasm. Thank you so much for all your kind words. <laughs> and Hi, congratulations Shandy. On, on your show. This is wonderful. Oh, it's, it's Centaurus. It's Centaurus. All congratulations goes to her. Absolutely. Ah, yes. <laughs> wonderful. Um, I found your, um, your, your topic very intriguing. Talking about attachments, yes, and yeah, I, I yeah. totally agree with what you said. You know, 
Well, the attachments we have, we have, we the, the most important attachment that I feel uh, that that would be healthy for Kundalini awakening people is to get rid of the fear attachment, the fear app. Exactly. You know what? Ha- um, how how um, I handled it? Whenever mm-hmm. I'm, um, you know, I, I I have like say a fear or anger or whatever negative or dark um, attachment that that might come up. It's all. I just remind myself. It's all about choices. So I say, okay, I have a choice. I can be fearful, or I can come from love, or you know, I'm angry, or um, so I have a choice. Do I stay angry and make myself miserable, or do I just let it go and be happy? You know. But it's about making the choices. And that, I that's a, that's me, a, that's a very good technique. I like that. I like that. Yeah. But, it really but with the Kundalini, with the Kundalini though. Uh, uh, Shandi, as you well know, sometimes you don't get a choice with the Kundalini, right? You don't. You don't what? Oh, get a choice. Sometimes, sometimes you don't get a choice with the Kundalini. Well, you you have a choice as to how you react to whatever. Um, yeah. Whatever yeah, happens. Your response. You yeah, have your a choice response. in your response, and this exactly. is so 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 true. Uh, Shandi, you get a choice in your response, and and really, uh, I, I'm I'm really happy that you you brought that up because that really is the crux. How do you choose to respond to the new scenario that is being uh, given to you, the new body, the new movement, the new understanding, the new uh, perceptions? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, and you, you know you get to self analyze and you know because basically you you're responsible for how you you react to anything you know it's not and often it's often that's part of that that's often part of the kundalini test as well it's like okay we're going to we're going to throw this challenging situation at Chris here and let's see what he does yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> In Shanti oh. Devi and and our Karma Cafe and your shows will come up. Come up, yeah. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you back on the other show too, Prism. It's just a different day and a different time. Um, as soon as I get situated, probably after the the, the new age, the new our new. Um... <laughs> I would love to. I would love to come on your program again. And I thank you for all the programs. And everybody, if you'd like to visit the Karma Cafe, uh, K-A-R-M-A, and that's uh, K-A-F-E or? Uh, C-A-F-F-E. C-A-F-F-E. So you need to remember that other F in there. And and if you go into her archives, uh, I've given other uh, interviews uh, by the grace of Shandi. Mm-hmm. 
And you can you can visit those interviews too and, and uh get a yes, different uh, those are very um very valuable also. Also they can, the shows can be um accessed through iTunes. Oh. So if you yeah, if you go to iTunes, um you should be able to download it and listen to it at you know, at your convenience. Just go there to iTunes go, and Karma Cafe. Mhm iTunes at Karma Cafe. So, yeah. so for those who have that interest, yeah, and and have the availability for iTunes, you know, mm-hmm. definitely, uh, you know, suggest you look into it. Yes. Thank you, Shandi. Thank you for coming uh, on. And uh, thank you, and good luck, and congratulations, and I enjoyed the show very much. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Happy Happy twenty first to you as well. Amelia or Sandra, yes. do we have any? Is there? Did, did you mention there's, before the show there there are some questions? Well, there was a question here that I and um, that was emailed Chris, and will I read it? Yeah. And um, it says, I keep having dreams and nightmares about disaster scenarios, and I am not sure if it is symbolic K dreaming or premonition dreaming or just my ego, and um, because I feel quite fearful about 2012. Well. That last statement right there is enough to color your dreams. Not to say, not to say that disasters don't occur. Absolutely, disasters occur everywhere on this on this world. Uh, it's it's a fact of life here. I mean, you know, if you step on an ant hill, well, a disaster just occurred for that ant hill. Okay, so yeah, disasters can occur, and you know. You know, uh, uh, worldwide disasters can occur as well. Monsanto, I would call a worldwide disaster. Okay, it's just one that's slow motion. Um, But, yeah, you know, disasters will occur. Don't be afraid of disasters. Just don't be afraid of them. Be prepared for them. Take strength from your preparation. And don't get OCD about preparing either. You know, you can get so wrapped up in your fear about a disaster that you'll try to cover every angle. I don't suggest you do that. Just go with the basics. Find the reason why you're afraid so much about a disaster. Is it the change the disaster portends? Is it inconvenience, not being able to flip a switch and have a light come on? Do you have to work a little harder to get light? What is it that makes you afraid of a disaster? How much of it is 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 just the change from something that is familiar to something that is unfamiliar? Granted, you know you you don't want to be in a in a in a uh, a tidal wave or or a tsunami or you know you know if you get injured it can be painful so of course i can understand the 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 fear of being you know put into an injury uh but if you do your best to mitigate this so for instance if you're in earthquake land like i am then you you always have that wrench that allows you to turn the gas off when the earthquake is over gas lines can burst and so you want to go and have that that tool that wrench that will be able to turn the gas off. So you want to know where your gas main is. So everybody, go around your house, or around your trailer, or around wherever it is you live, and know how to turn off the gas. If you're living in an apartment, well, then, you know, your apartment manager should have that information. And, you know, there needs to be somebody in charge down there who will turn off the gas main. This has a great great effect of reducing the amount of fires and explosions that would occur, say, in an, in an earthquake or in some sort of a big, big uh, 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 change of, of a, you know, of a, of a large magnitude. Uh, if, if, if it's fear of that type of a disaster, um, you know, look at, look at where you're living. Are you, you know, if you're living in a big city or you're living in a high rise, you know, maybe you want to go for a trip during the uh, the December 21st. If if you're feeling from your dream life 
that there's going to be great destruction uh, in your area, take a trip. Go to the desert. Go to the desert. Seriously, if you go to the desert, uh, make sure you have your water and your food and all of those things. Leave early. You know, maybe leave uh, tomorrow. Seriously, leave tomorrow. Go camping. Yes, it'll be cold. Yes, it'll be a good reason to have a nice bonfire. Yes, you can do it with your friends and your family. Make it fun. Make it beautiful. Make it enjoyable. Get out of the city. Going now is much easier than going after the fact. So if you're having dreams that you feel are, are portentous dreams, that are that are dreams, and people have this. I have to tell you, uh, I just came back from Martinique uh, in, the, in the French Polynesia, or no, 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 um, the French Caribbean. And uh, Martinique in 1907, May, May 8, 1907, had a huge eruption from the side of a volcano, not the top, but the side of a volcano. Actually, the top and the side blew off, and this this pyroclastic cloud of burning material descended upon St. Pierre and wiped everybody out in a matter of about five minutes. So about 38,000 people were killed in about five minutes. Uh, they had warning before then, the mountain would rumble, the volcano would spew out some ash material, and they were four miles from the volcano, right? Four miles. Not very far. Many, many, many people at the time had dreams that they needed to leave, that they needed to leave, they needed to leave. Some of them followed those dreams, and they survived. Others didn't and they didn't survive. I'm not one to take dreams very lightly. I realize and I recognize, and the Kundalini teaches, the dream life is another reality that we live in connection with this reality. The two realities are, are part of a, of a oneness of realities that occurs. And so if you're getting dreams that are of a, of a, of a precognitive nature, precognition means that you're, you're dreaming of the future, you're, you have knowledge of the future. If, if you're not afraid, if you're not overly, you know, afraid of, of what's occurring for 2021, or I'm sorry, 2012, December 21st, in your area, then don't worry about it. But if you, if, you know, if, if you're, if you're getting dreams that that uh, that you feel is is having the uh, a precognitive effect for you, and you're not just buying into all the hype, you know, let's look at our, let's look at the media. The media is really, uh, on the one hand, they're saying, oh, it's nothing, have a great party. On the other hand, it's saying, oh my God, run for your lives. What they're doing is they're, they're saying anything that they can say that will make people buy their newspaper or listen to their show or go to their online website. Fear sells. Just like sex. Sex sells. Well, so does fear. Fear sells. Okay. So watch what you're buying into on a societal level and know that if you do, when you do have kundalini, well, you can tie in to the miasma of thoughts that that our society produces. So make it, make look at that and realize that oh, that's that's the miasma of thoughts. People are in survival mode, and oh, at this time of the year, they're really in survival mode. Christmas has that effect on people. They want to spend money on loved ones that they don't have, and 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 you know they're feeling uh, dejected and depressed. And and oh, here comes 2012, December 21st, and uh, I just finished watching that 2012 movie. And oh my God, I live in Santa Monica, and oh my God, it's going to go down. What do I do? You know. So watch, watch what it is you're taking in as far as programming goes. And if you're able to, to excise that out of the equation and you're still having premonition-type dreams, 
And I'm going to say, pack the car up, go to your favorite campground outside of the city, and have a three-day, or let's see, since it's on Friday, yeah, have a have a four-day weekend. Call in sick. Do whatever you need to do. Make sure you pack food. Make sure you, you have warmth. You know, this is winter in the northern latitude, so make sure that you're able to stay warm. Make sure that you're able to stay fed. Make sure that you're able to stay hydrated. Make sure that you have a radio with you. Maybe practice some of these these techniques of what it is to go camping. How do you start a fire? How do you make a fire? You know, what if you don't have matches? What do you do then? I'll suggest you go to the store and get some of those magnesium uh, lighters, you know, the, you know, Bic lighters. Do whatever you can do to, to have the, avail- the availability of fire. Take your kids with you. Invite your friends. Hey, I want to go spend uh, the, the, the winter solstice or, you know, the, 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 uh, the end of the Mayan long count out there in the desert. So where we can see the stars. Go out of Los Angeles. Go out of San Francisco. Go out of New York. Go out of Atlanta. Go out of New Orleans. Go away from wherever there are these these tremendous high rises that would be, say, prone to a to a you know a, an earthquake. If you're feeling that way, I'm not. I am not one that will say, you know, don't respond to premonition dreams because I know with kundalini people some of those dreams are true some of it you're buying in to programming some of it so discern for yourself look beyond your fear look beyond your fear and if it's still there with you now's a good time to pick out a campsite Now's a good time to go to the grocery store, get your canned food, get your water, get your gear, get ready to go, get your fire starting materials, pack up the car, gas prices have gone down a little bit, get some gas, maybe get some extra gas, you know, if you can get extra gas, get some extra gas too, and go. Go. Nothing wrong with taking a little camping vacation. If you can, if you can have something to, you know, we'll say, let's just say the worst case scenario happens, right? Uh, something occurs, and we're, we're, you know, we're thrust into a, a primal time. Well, then, you know, you just have, you have the food, you have your water, you have uh, an, an ability to find shelter or to make shelter. Tom Brown. Tom Brown sells a lot of books uh, that are uh, that I would suggest. He uh, he has a four book set that's all about survival, it's, and it's not necessarily survival within a disaster, but sometimes some of it he has one on suburban suburban survival uh, techniques. And uh, so, for instance, let me let me give you a for instance. So, for those of you that are living in a cold climate right now, like say Chicago, New York, Buffalo. You know, some of the northern areas, if all of a sudden the electricity went out, well, how are you going to stay warm? I mean, geez, Louise, it's cold in Chicago right now. So one of the things that you would do is you would stuff newspapers and plastic bags and things like that into your jacket, into your coat, because what they do is they further insulate you. They keep your body temp- They keep your body temperature warm. Uh, as a as a source of of heat for yourself, so you just that's one technique. Who would have thought of that, right? Oh, you, well, what Tom Tom Brown writes is he you know he says you go out along the street and you look for for any kind of clean trash that you can put into your into your jacket. Look for newspapers, old newspapers, or plastic bags, or things of that nature. Leaves, even leaves, will will help to insulate you. Okay, and 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 what what Chrisom will tell you to do is to get some DMSO, mix it with some water, uh, you know, seventy percent DMSO, thirty percent water, and 
Clean your digits very well. Clean your fingers very, very, very well. Clean it with alcohol or preferably something like uh, vodka or something like that, not not the toxic alcohols that they use to, to sterilize wounds with. Clean that first and then put it on your on your lips, on your ears, anything that would get frostbite. If you have DMSO in your system, then you're, you know, you're, you, you'll be safe from frostbite for a good, good amount of time. This they discovered in many, Minneapolis in the 60s. And that was with a, with a, with a lower concentration of DMSO as well. You can get that at your health food store. Okay, but, but be very, very careful because DMSO is a liquid, liquid hypodermic. And so whatever's on the top of your skin will go into your bloodstream. So make sure that whatever DMSO touches, uh, is, is, is as sterile as you can make it, okay? And of course, you know I don't I don't suggest DMSO for any kind of medical treatment or consumption. Uh, I'm basically quoting from uh, what the surgeon in Minnesota discovered when he he uh, saved a person from from frostbite. So there you have that. I am not a doctor, and of course, I will state that uh, under no under no uh, circumstance should you take any kind of medical advice from me. But you can take survival advice from me, and uh, that is being offered as survival advice. Santara, yes, question. And any more there, yes, this one isn't about 2012. It came in early, but I'd like to read it. And um, it says. When I had the Kundalini awakening this year, it seems that a close person also knew this was happening to me before it happened. The person told me about some of the symptoms I may have, and this helped me as I went into the Kundalini experience to let go and not fear. When I went to email this person, he had already congratulated me. I don't know what, I didn't know what had happened and the word Kundalini wasn't used, not until I did research did I find that I had something that people call a Kundalini awakening? Have you heard of this before, and could you comment on it? Sure, sure, sure. That you know, uh, having knowledge uh, uh, of, of Kundalini. If you already have Kundalini and you see somebody going through the the symptoms of the awakening, they it's fairly simple to to realize where they are in it. Uh, you you know, if if they're uh, in a certain spiritual practice or in a certain belief system or or something of that nature and and the person who is doing the observing already has the kundalini well there's a certain level of knowingness that comes with that the kundalini may even communicate it to the observer directly it's like oh she's coming into kundalini she's she, yeah, she's about maybe a week off from having a spinal sweep or the actual uh, marriage um when you're when you're when you're kundalini awakened, you you you're privy to such knowledge. You you can have that. You can see that. You can feel it. You can know it, and uh, you can you can give a, a, an email to the person giving them a congratulation before they even know. So yeah yeah it's, it's that's a that's a fairly common trait among the awakened kundalini people. So congratulations to the caller, to, to the person who asked the question, for having the kundalini and having a friend who was able to see it in advance. How cool is that? Okay, well, we've also received some inquiries about donations and how to financially support Kaz and the teacher. And one inquiry asked why there was no donation icon on the website because she said there's donation icons on every website that she visits. And um, I'd like to address that, if I may, in a moment. But also, there was an email from Pat who said, Chris, your videos on YouTube and your articles on Facebook have been a godsend to me. And I would like to support you in your work, but do not know how to go about doing this. So if I could just say to Pat and to others who have asked about donating and supporting Quism and the work that he does, I would like to say thank you. This support is necessary and very much appreciated. And as I mentioned in the introduction, um, Kudalini Awakening Systems, or CAS, is now a United States of America public charity. However, 
Although non-profit has been granted, the paperwork is still in progress and this must still be completed before that donation button can be installed on the CAS1 website. So perhaps in the meantime, until that donate button can be activated, I'd like to encourage you and invite those of you who want to support CAS and your teacher to send um, your donation to the post. And so if you have a buyer already, I'm going to give you the post or the snail mail address. And that is Christopher Mitchell, P.O. Box 2663, Santa Rosa, California, 95405. That's P.O. Box 2663, Santa Rosa, California, 95405. And also, if you want to send in any questions um, by email for the next show, you can send them to kundaliniawakening111 at gmail.com. And, Chrism, there was another question. Um, it actually came to the Facebook site, and it says, Chrism, I am on your YouTube watching your most recent video on 2012. I have a strong feeling nothing dramatic will happen. What are your thoughts? Kundalini doesn't seem to give precise premonitions, I think, or maybe it does. I am feeling confident these days, but I don't want to be complacent. Well, I would I would just uh, suggest that, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, Amelia, for, for posting that. that I, I, I do not charge at, at this point, and, and I don't want to charge uh, anybody for this information. I know when I had it, I didn't have any money, and, and it was it was really hard sometimes, and so that's why I don't like to charge for this information. Well, I think, that, Chris, and most, most teachers in the West charge specific payments to receive their teachings, and you've never done this, and, you know, you work 24-7 for CAS, giving the teachings with love and devotion and service without setting a fee. So I think I for those of us who receive comes the opportunity to give for this grace. So I would like right. to... Okay. All gifts are appreciated. All, all gifts are preaching, and, and 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 I thank you for that. Uh, and I do have bills to pay. I have my big computer just went down today. I'm I'm talking on, on a laptop now. And that'll probably cost to get fixed as well. Anyway, um, to the to the to the so person. So Paulina, who, it was oh, Paulina on Facebook, and and you've Paulina. actually answered some of them. Yeah, yeah. Paulina, hi Paulina. I help you. I think on Facebook. You do. <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the Kundalini dreaming. If it, if you're in an area that's going to get demolished, like the people in Saint Pierre and Martinique, you would be well. You you do well to listen to those dreams. Absolutely. If you're living next to a volcano that's been erupting, if you're living in a place like say Tokyo or Japan or somewhere where where recent Volcanic or earthquake activity has been noted. Yeah, I would. I would if if I were in in Tokyo, you know, I would take a boat. You notice that's the safest place to be, really, in a tsunami is on a boat. It's not because the big wave comes. It's not a big wave, really, in that way at all. It's just the the entire sea just lifts up. It's just lifting. If you look at any of the videos of the of the tsunami. Uh, or Phuket, uh, it's a lifting of the sea, not a not a, a surfable wave that you can you can get on a surfboard and wave. It's not like that uh, that, that that we've noticed at all. But but if you're so a boat, you know, being out to sea is one of the safest places to be in regards to tsunami. Uh, but if you're in a geographical location where uh, traumatic uh, uh, phenomena has already been occurring, then yeah, I would I would leave the area, definitely. But if you're not, if it, if, if if you're in an area that that has up to this point been very very quiet or quiet, then yeah, I would I would have a uh, uh, I love to say it I I'd, I'd, I'd have an end of the world party, and a beginning of the new world party. So an end of the world and a birth of the new world, the birth of the new paradigm. 
when the when the, when it goes twelve oh one on 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 uh, December twenty first, wherever you are, well, you make a toast to this new world. Whether you're, you know, if, if you're in the in the middle of an earthquake, it might be hard to hold the fluid in the glass. I understand, but uh, you know, <laughs> if you're not, then make it a joyful beginning. Start this new long count joyfully. And Paulina, definitely have your backup your backup stuff. I know where you live, and I'm feeling that you're living you're you're actually in, in what I would consider to be a, a fairly safe zone. Uh but I would say have that bug out bag. Put in the the the, the canned food, the the uh get the water get the matches, get whatever you want to put in that you might need. Get that can opener, get that Swiss Army knife, get some clothing, extra shoes, extra socks, whatever you need to be out in the wilderness for an extended amount of time. Get that ready and just put it in the closet. Put it in the trunk of the car. Have it when you need it. Have it when you need it, if you need it, if you need it. Now, let's see, uh, you may suffer electrical outages. You know, this this can happen. And so that bug out bag will once again come in handy because you, even though you, you'll still have your apartment or your house, wherever it is you're living, uh, but you may not have the availability of food. So your canned goods and, and you may not have water to pump from, you know, and, most water uh, in the in the uh, in the Western technological societies it runs on electricity. You get it because of electricity. You don't have electricity, you're not getting your water. And so, make sure, Paulina, that you have a good you know nine gallons of water in reserve for yourself. And if you're living with your family, get even more. And remember that you, no longer do you use water to brush your teeth with. No longer do you use water the way you did. You don't wash your hands so much. Okay? Water is a precious resource, you know, in that type of a situation. But, Paulina, Paulina, I think you will do wonderful. And, Paulina, I thank you for listening to the show and writing in. Thank you very much. And it's good good to hear from you. Okay, and there's another question, Cousin. We have time. We have four minutes. And you have addressed some of this, but I'll read it for you. It says, Cousin, a year ago, everyone was predicting mass disasters, and for sure there have been some. But I would suggest nothing more than is normal for our, our world, at least not up, at least up to this point in time. I am observing how many of the people who spoke quite adamantly about the world as we know it coming to an end have been modifying their perspective. Uh, just in case they will be proved to be wrong. Uh, would you comment on this, please? Like I said, fear sells. So whatever, you know, they wanted, if, if they wanted to get noticed, then they would, they would say the disasters are coming. Oh, my God, run for your life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's basically, uh, and, you know, what, what will also happen is those who, those who were, you know, saying that the, the the sky is falling, you know, that that because of their their prayers and their and their uh, techniques and their and their you know get-togethers and their meetings and their you know uh, sacred gatherings that that they were able to stop the great demolishing uh, disasters from happening and. And that's why it didn't happen. You know, you're going to get a lot of that, too. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of that happened after Y2K as well. So, you know, what I say to that is I say, hey, okay, whatever. Uh, you look at uh, how they're modifying it, and and you just kind of forgive them maybe for some of the panic that they may have caused earlier. And, uh, you know, you, you, you just, just kind of... Their 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 spiritual evolution, you know the, you know what 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 they give out is is what they may receive at another time. Uh, I feel that uh, it's a, more of a geographical thing. 
um, I've always kind of seen it as a happy new world type of scenario. But I also understand that, that disasters happen. I mean, you know, the, the Loma Prieta happened. You know, earthquakes happen. Tsunami in Japan happened. Tsunami in Phuket happened. So these things do occur. And you know, I'm not. I'm certainly not going to 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 say that they don't occur. I am going to say that they uh, that that you can you can prepare. You can have a, a way to survive them. And and for those that are spreading fear and fear and fear, well, I'm going to say don't buy into it. Don't buy into it at all. And and it's nice to to hear uh, the the person uh, is not falling into that. And and I and I tip my hat okay. to you. Well, we actually have another caller online, but we don't have time to go to take that it, caller. Let's take it. Can, okay, take it. okay, one second now. Hello, caller. Hello. Hi, you're Hello. to Chrism. Go ahead. Hello. Hey. Hi, Chrism. This is uh, Jeffrey from Florida. Uh, I wanted to ask you. I've been doing your system for several years now, and it's absolutely been life changing and wonderful. I've had about 12 spinal sweeps over the last several years. Uh, they always stop at my third eye. We're going uh, to close time, guys. I was going to, I wanted to ask you if you had any thoughts on how to get through these types of knots. I'll cover it on my next show, my friend. But you can private, privately email me, and I'll, I'll respond to you as well. Thank you so much, Chris. My really. Is this Jeff? Yeah. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll respond to you, Jeff. I really okay, appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome, my friend. Hey, everybody. Happy New World. Happy New World. <laughs> Toasting the new words and the new count. Long count. <laughs> thank you, Chris. All, right. All right. Thank you, Santara. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>